Hi and welcome to this short video introducing you to the world of systems biology and in particular how systems biology can be used as the way to make sense of all of the pieces of knowledge that you are gathering in your cross-disciplinary education whether it be on engineering biology, engineering chemistry, biomedical engineering, these type of uh, programs or if you are about to take such a course this is an introduction to how you can make sense of your previous knowledge that you have gathered. So um, with this course and with this um, with this uh, video I want to argue uh, that um, systems biology can be a red thread that can help you to guide your way through your education. Uh, so in your education you have learned and are learning or will learn many quite different subjects and the problem is that many of those teachers most of those teachers uh, will only know their own subject they will not know how to combine them with all of the other things that you are learning so if you're learning algebra linear algebra or calculus or something like this those teachers will typically know nothing about biology nothing about chemistry and um, in the same way the chemistry or the uh, or the or the biology teachers they will know very little about math and algebra so how to combine them is typically up to you and uh, to help you with this, we're, I've sort of created this video uh, and this series of videos on systems biology to help you uh, give hints and suggestions of how you can uh, combine uh, your different pieces of knowledge centrally. And systems biology is one way to do such a combination, but it's not the only way. So it's, it's just a way to make sense of all of your different pieces of knowledge but I don't want to in any way argue that this whole education that you are doing is only about systems biology. It's just one way to make it easier for you to sort of structure the relationship between your different pieces of knowledge. So in your head it might sometimes feel like this, that you have glycolysis lying somewhere, differential equations lying somewhere, uh, knowledge about algebra or cell biology lying in different places in your head and it's just a big mishmash of knowledge that is not in any way structured or made into beautiful uh, constructions. So the question is can you see a red thread through all of these different things? And my argument in this very short little introductory video is that systems biology is that. It rests on three pillars. The first pillar is biology and medicine. Uh, and what you take and what you need from biology and medicine is the ability to understand data, to understand the, res the research questions in biology and medicine, and to read such literature, uh, such scientific papers and books. Chemistry, physics and math is another pillar. And what you take out from, such, uh, from those fields is the ability to translate knowledge about biology and medicines into mathematical models. And then the final pillar comes from fields like automatic control and programming, where you learn things that are maybe the most specific to systems biology. And that is the ability to analyze the data and the model, and the relationship, and to draw the right conclusions about how the biological system works. And typically those conclusions you can only draw using the mathematical models. So these are the three pillars. And if you take, for instance, an education as engineering biology, so TAB in Swedish, then you study chemistry and organic chemistry, linear algebra and calculus. In chemistry and organic chemistry, you will learn about reactions, reaction rates, like Michaelis Menten expressions. In linear algebra and calculus, you will learn about differential equations. And the, the thing that you do in systems biology is that you combine these so that you use rate expressions and reactions to form a specific set of differential equations and you can formulate th those using matrices which you learn about in linear algebra. So typical biology and medicine courses is cell biology and microbiology which are basic courses and then you come on to gene technology and molecular biology, molecular physics, immune biology 
you also have courses in programming and then you have courses like bioinformatics which is a related field to systems biology which also lies here in the cross section between all of these things you have courses that uh, um, lie more towards engineering physics like mechanics matlab which they use and that we also will use a lot signal and image analysis which is related to um, fields like uh, system identification which we have adopted and uh, sort of fitted to the needs uh, of systems biology and uh, between all of these three pillars you will circulate in systems biology they are all interconnected they are all part of the same whole and therefore if you use systems biology as an aid or you can use systems biology as an aid to to um, to make sense of all of the things that you have uh, that you have learned and that you are learning and that you will learn and that's the only point i wanted to make in this short little introduction video <laughs>